Hello friends and welcome to church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson. I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome Church and I'm so happy you've joined us today for worship, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or through our webpage. I love the fact that you're joining us for worship this day. We're going to be continuing our sermon series entitled Broken. And for this series, I've been pe preaching from the book of Romans, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. And Paul's letter addresses a people he had actually never met, but had hoped to travel to and visit one day. He knew that the Christian life was difficult and the world in which the church was growing and spreading was unpredictable and increasingly diverse. Now in this series covering some of the letter's most intriguing and inspiring passages, we learn how God sustains us amid brokenness, both the brokenness found within us and that of the world around us, helping us to find wholeness and unity no matter what crisis we face. God chooses all of us, despite our human differences, will be the focus today. Let us prepare our hearts for praise and worship.
heart through all of my failure and pride. On a hill you created the light of the world, abandoned in darkness to And as you speak, a hundred billion failures disappear. Where you lost your life so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so And if creation sings your praises, so will I. Hello, church. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I'm the executive director here at Jerome. As we prepare to hear today's message, I want to invite you to connect with us during this time of our online worship together. During worship today, you can use the chat or the comment function on any platform that you're watching on to share your thoughts or your prayer concerns with our staff and our online worshiping congregation. I also invite you to connect to Church Center, which is our app and our online resource that virtually connects you to our Connect card, signups for upcoming events, worship videos and resources, kids and family resources, and our online giving platform to support the ministries and missions of Jerome Church. You can scan the QR code on the screen to connect or visit us online at jeromechurch.org church dash center. Today we are continuing our new series called Broken as we're diving into Paul's letter to the Romans. So let's hear today's message from Pastor Bruce. Would you pray with me, friends? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever worried about someone, uh, or more specifically, have you ever worried about where somebody stood with God in their, in their faith? Now, last week, I mentioned that I was very blessed to be uh, raised by a father who was loving and patient and understanding even of his clumsy and often son who just did some stupid things, me. I was just prone to that kind of thing. I was a kid. We talked about that last week, and I, I felt very lucky about that. And in that sermon, I also mentioned that my father did not express necessarily his love or how proud he was of me in verbal ways. It was through actions. And one of the, he was just a, a man of few words, and looking back, I love him for this. However, one of the conversations that I was never able to have with my father before he passed away, and this was even uh, before I had really come back to the church again, 
this was before my my answering of the call to ministry when he passed away. I was newly married just a couple of years. We had just bought a house uh, when he passed away. Uh, but one of the things I never had uh, a chance to talk about was where was he in his faith walk? Uh, I believe he was a Christian, but where was he in that faith walk? I know he went to church with us when we were young kids, and I know that after we left the church for a period of time he came and came back, that my father came to service when my mom and I were singing in church, and he loved to hear my mom sing. But I never asked him about his faith. I, I vaguely remember him saying he was either Lutheran or Presbyterian, uh, but, but I really don't have a memory of that. Uh, that I can hold on to, a deep conversation and his faith. And so after he died and after I've had my call to ministry, I really struggled with where, where did my dad stand? Did he have faith that God's grace was enough shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? Did he find salvation? What was his belief system? What did he understand? It's something that I struggled with. And believe it or not, it's something that Paul is struggling with in today's uh, portion of the letter from uh, Romans. He's worried about the salvation of the people of Israel, his own people. So let us hear these words from chapter 9 verses 1 through 5 and understand that this opening section is really laying out his argument in the letter for the next two to three chapters. So just hear these opening verses. I speak the truth in Christ. I'm not lying. My conscience confirms it through the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and uneasing and unceasing anguish in my heart, for I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my people, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption to sonship. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all forever praised. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You can hear in the writing that Paul is struggling. He's living in a time where uh, there are still debates in the early Christian church about circumcision and food laws coming from the church in Jerusalem, but also the stark reality that few of the people of Israel have accepted the idea that Jesus is God's Messiah, the culmination of the law. Paul is reaching out to many Gentile faith communities and seeking their acceptance uh, their acceptance in the growing church, but particularly the church in Jerusalem, who is made out of many of the Jews who believe that Jesus is the Messiah. And that's where many of the arguments about circumcision and the uh, food-based uh, laws are coming out of. Now, in this passage, Paul is struggling with the fact that the Gentiles are receiving the gospel while the very people through whom God chose to bless the, the world, do, do, do not appear to be embracing the good news. This is distressing to Paul, who he himself is an Israelite. If it were possible, he says, he would wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from the Christ for the sake of my people. It distresses Paul that Israel appears to be rejecting Christ, the Messiah. Yet he goes through and says, yet God has blessed Israel, given them certain uh, privileges with many gifts for salvation. There is the adoption to sonship. There is the divine glory, the covenant, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of the Messiah, who is God over all, forever praised. In these verses, Paul is moving away from grief to hope and realizing that God isn't yet finished with the Israelite people, the Jewish people. God hasn't yet written the final chapter in the book that is his dealings with them. So the apostle passionately clings to the hope for Israel, the apostle's way of reminding us that Christ 
not any other person is God. So salvation isn't finally up to the people. It's actually up to Christ, the Messiah, who is God over all. Now, God calls all people to receive God's grace with our faith, but neither that faith nor anything else Christian do saves us. And so his ultimate question is, what's going to happen to the people of Israel? And then he figures it out for himself. They are a people of covenant. Their path is laid before them. God has given them a covenant, and God is going to hold true to that covenant. And for some, the story is not finished. Some may go on to accept the sonship, the adoption in Christ, and others may still be a part of the original covenant. But in the end, only God's grace is what saves us. It's our faith in God's grace. Now, we say it that it's our faith in God's grace through Christ, who is God over all, that saves anyone. In short, God's grace includes all, no ifs, ands, and buts. Grace has the power to transform individual lives and communities, to heal our brokenness and move us towards something better. God is in the business of restoration by grace, and God's love extends to all. Friends, too often we find ourselves with a little bit of, if I may say, a Messiah complex, as, as if it is our job to save someone. We do this in much the same way we feel fall into the trap of believing it is our job to judge others also. In reality, it is our job to love. It is the work of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to play their roles into salvation. We are saved in our faith in God's grace, shown through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And while we are here on earth, we are on a mission to love God, love neighbor, make disciples, teaching them all that Christ has taught us, baptizing them in the triune God's name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, while being guided, transformed, convicted by the Holy Spirit. So friends, Jesus' followers can remain hopeful about those who haven't yet received God's grace with their faith, as long as we continue to play our role to love them and share with them the gospel good news, playing our role in God's plan of salvation. That is what we are guided to do, not to judge, not to say somebody else's faith is wrong, whether they are uh, Jewish or Muslim, those are people of the book, or if they are out exploring, because God's grace is still there for them to discover. God's plan is still at work. Our job is not to judge. It is not to convict. Our job is to love. Love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor, sharing the gospel good news to all we meet, our faith, living it out through all we do. Friends, let us not lose focus of our own salvation while we try to save others. The salvation has already been won. God took care of that. Our job is to love. May it be so. Thanks be to God. And amen. It is good to be with you again in worship today. Today we're continuing our new series called Broken as we're considering the ways that God delivers wholeness and unity in the midst of our chaos and brokenness. As we continue in worship together today, I want to invite you again to connect to all of the resources in Church Center, which is our online hub for engaging with the ministries of Jerome Church. While you're there, please be sure to check into worship or complete your Connect card today. and. Take some time to explore all of the opportunities in the app, including upcoming events and ways to volunteer in a local mission, or to grow deeper in your faith by participating in an upcoming class or a study. One of the ways that you can join in the work of serving others at Jerome Church is by participating and supporting our Habitat for Humanity and Help Build Hope Wall Build that's coming up on Saturday, September 9th. 
For the fourth year, we will come together during this event as a church and community to build the walls of a family home that will be donated to a partner Habitat for Humanity organization. You can support this year's wall build by signing up to volunteer. You could choose to lead a work team, or you can support this event financially by making a donation or by becoming an event sponsor. You can scan the QR code on the screen to learn more or to register or donate for the wall build. Two other opportunities that are coming up this fall include our adult mission trip to Appalachia Service Project, which will be September 28th through October 1st, and our Fall Fest Craft and Vendor Show, which is coming up on October 13th and 14th. You can learn more about all of the upcoming opportunities at Jerome Church, as well as view the calendar and connect to signups through the Church Center app or by visiting our website at jeromechurch.org. The people of Jerome Church are committed to the mission that Jesus gave to us to love God and love people. And you can support the missions and ministries of this church by giving a financial offering today. You can give electronically through the link in today's video description on the Jerome Church website or through the Give tab in the Church Center app. And if you've made the decision to give for the first time today, you can give electronically by texting the word GIVE to 614-587-7871. You can also give through the automatic withdrawal option by contacting the church office or by mailing a check to Jerome Church at the address that's on the screen below. As we end our time of worship together today, I want to say thank you for making this worship time a part of your busy week, whether you're joining us live on Sunday morning or watching later on demand. I wanna invite you to connect with us online this week through our social media platforms and in the Church Center app, and know that we look forward to worshiping with you again this next week as we continue our series together. Have a blessed week, friends. So like you would again a hundred billion times but what measure could amount to your desire the one who never leaves the one behind and if creation still obeys you so If creation sings your praises, so will I.